I have somehow amassed over $10,000 worth of 3D printing equipment, and it's about time I set up a proper print farm. Watch how I created a dedicated space by being intentional and focusing on workflow and efficiency. And of course, going a little over the top with it. Even if you're not into 3D printing at all, there just might be something here that can help you in your shop or workspace. This video is brought to you by Shopify, but we'll get to that later. As my 3D printing business has grown, so has my fleet of Prusa i3 Mark III printers. And frankly, I'm running out of places to put them. I've got three sitting in my wife's office, which is on the main level of our house, which is also where I fulfill all the packages, do all the prep work to the parts, and do some light assembly of the products that I sell. And I've got three more Prusas downstairs in my basement office sitting on this thing, plus this other 3D printer I've got back here that I use for R&D type stuff. And while this setup technically works, it's not ideal to have them all spread out like this because checking on and changing prints becomes kind of a chore. And if you've seen any of my other shop videos, you know that I'm all about efficiency. And to make things worse, I've actually got four more that I ordered that are on their way right now just to keep up with the man, which means that I'll soon have 10 printers to keep up with and manage. And as you can tell, I don't have anywhere else to put them. So what I wanna do is be intentional and get all of these workhorses in one spot so that I can manage them more efficiently and get them out of the way of our everyday lives, which includes tiny fingers of children who constantly wanna to touch them. But there's really only one spot left in our house to even do this. And that spot is right there on that shelf here in the unfinished part of our basement. And to give you some context, back behind me is the home gym that we built out here on the channel probably a year and a half ago. But the spot right here is the future print farm location. Based on the shelf size, I can fit nine printers pretty comfortably. The 10th printer is going to stay in my office to do basic prototyping and to prove out the print files that will eventually go to the other nine in the print farm. So first things first, let's get all this stuff cleared out of the way. Now the standard wire mesh shelving that comes on these shelves is not gonna work very well with the little rubber feet on the 3D printer. So I'm gonna have to replace all that with some plywood. I'll go ahead and get the shelf heights adjusted just to make sure we've got room for everything. And then it's just a matter of ripping down some three quarter inch plywood to the right size. And yes, three quarter inch plywood is probably overkill, but oh well. All right, we've got all the solid shelves in place, but before we start adding the printers, I'm gonna wait for those other ones to show up in the mail. In the meantime, let's build a little workbench. All right, the next order of business is to create kind of a workstation cart to go along with the shelving unit. If there's one thing I found out about 3D printing is that there's lots of tasks you do in association with printing things like cleaning up parts by removing little boogers or stringing, doing some light assembly, or installing hardware like heat set inserts. Having a dedicated spot to do this, which isn't my wife's office, is gonna make things a lot easier. So I mentioned earlier that I currently use my wife's office to do fulfillment and some assembly. Well, that assembly actually happens inside of the closet. So all the tasks that I would normally do here, like put in heat set inserts with this press here, do all the assembly with all the parts and pieces, all that's gonna happen down on a little cart, workbench, whatever the heck you wanna call it, down in the basement. Slight change of plans. You see, I had every intention of building this thing. I even made a little sketch showing exactly what I wanted to make, and it was very purpose-built to what I'm gonna use it for. But then I got to thinking, why build something so specific out of materials that are so expensive for a condition that I know is gonna change? So instead, what I did is I went and found the cheapest rolling toolbox I could possibly find, which is this Yukon Harbor Freight brand. And to be honest, I paid about the same that I would the materials that I would have had to build this thing out of anyways, let alone my time. Now I know the quality of this thing is not spectacular, but this is gonna be a lot easier to repurpose later than a special built cart that I would've made for this solution. There are a couple things, however, that I wanna customize for this. And the first one, weirdly enough, is to hang a trash can off the side of it. Now one thing I've come to find is that as you're trimming off those little boogers and strings from prints, those little things get everywhere. And having a place to sweep everything into a trash can is gonna keep the area nice and clean and make my life easier. And the second is to create kind of a back-mounted shelf to hold these little bins for hardware. Now there's a lot of things that I'm always grabbing for, whether it be T-bolts, washers, or even knobs for things like stop locks that I just wanna have out in the open and available at all times. That's not only gonna make it easier and prevent me from having to open a drawer to get them, but it's also gonna show me exactly when I need to reorder. So let's knock those out real quick and then we'll go put it in place. So the whole reason I have a print farm in the first place is because I print products that I then sell online. And up to this point, I've used Etsy, but with a high fee structure and having not that much control over how my products are listed and offered, I've decided to build my own store using Shopify. And if you don't know, Shopify is basically a tool for creating an online business. And what I really appreciate about Shopify is you can make it as easy or complicated as you want. What I mean is that there are templates or themes as they call them that you can use to build out a polished finished website in really no time at all. 
or you can hire a Shopify expert who can write custom code and give you a totally customized store. I'm electing to go the easier route and using a paid theme, and so far it's been super easy. I'm actually currently in the process of building out that store, and it's going a lot faster than I would have thought. And one of the big reasons why is also a reason why I like Shopify, is that it's built with an ecosystem of third-party apps that you can use to streamline your business. These apps let you do pretty much anything with your store, from collect marketing emails, send out newsletters, and import things from sites like Etsy. So I actually used an Etsy importer, I linked up to my Etsy account, and it took all of my listings and pulled them onto my new site. This literally saved me hours of work. And now I have a brand new Shopify store with all of my current products, which I can now customize and change to my heart's content. And to be honest, there are tons of examples of apps just like that. So if you've ever wanted to start an online business, take a look at Shopify. Literally millions of companies have used Shopify to build out their online stores. You can go try it out risk-free with a 14-day free trial by heading to shopify.com shopnation. Seriously, even if you're just curious, go check it out. You will be shocked at how easy it is to set up your own online store. Okay. Let's go finish this thing. Now, thank God I didn't film myself getting this down one flight of stairs by myself. But we got it here, and kudos to the Yukon brand. It survived, I think. But now that it is here, let's deck it out with our custom features. Load it up. All right, so I'm already super stoked with how this little workstation is turning out. It's still early days. Everything's not quite how it should be. I'll probably tackle that organization at some point in the future. But to keep this train rolling, let's move back to the printer rack and deal with vibration and power. So the power consumption of one individual printer is fairly low. It typically pulls about 60 watts. It might spike up to about 300 watts. But when you start combining nine of them at a time, then you run into issues, especially if they all hit that high point at the same time. And then we compound that with the fact that a power blip, to a 3D printer at least, is no bueno. So what I like to do is run all of my printers through a UPS, or uninterrupted power supply. It's essentially a battery that acts as a capacitor in case there's a power blip, or if the power draw from the combination of all the printers running through the UPS is higher than the voltage can supply. Now upstairs in my wife's office, I'm running three printers through an 1100 VA rated UPS system. And to be honest, it's worked. Three printers have been running through that thing for a very long time, and sure enough, it saves all the prints during power blips. But always felt like it's a little bit undersized because when the power does go out, the UPS only lasts about 15 minutes of time for the printers. I went ahead and got 1500 VA rated systems just to give me that much more buffer. So in total, my rack is gonna have three UPS systems, each UPS running three different printers, which all need to be powered by something. Now in a perfect world, I'd probably have three circuits, one circuit per bank of three printers. But because the world is imperfect, I technically only have one circuit here, but I'm going to try and piggyback off of a different one, maybe from my office, which is on the other side of this wall. Now I'm not an electrician, but I think two circuits is cutting this a little close, but we're gonna try it. And finally, we should talk about vibration, because when you've got nine printers running on one shelf, there is a slight chance that you will encounter a resonance, which is fancy engineer speak for things will start shaking like crazy. So to combat this, I'm gonna attempt to isolate each one of my printers using a 12 inch by 12 inch cement paver, which is then sitting on top of a thin strip of foam that's placed on the shelf. The idea here is that I'm increasing the mass and adding a dampening factor with the foam, which should, in theory, isolate all of the printers. So before we move the printers on the rack, let's take care of those two items. Now, while that might be functional, I think it's kind of ugly. So I went a little overboard and made a three-sided apron that's gonna go around each of these to hide that. I think once all the printers are in place, it's gonna make it look that much better.
And speaking of over the top, I went ahead and added two of these Barina fixtures that I had left over from doing the lighting down here in the basement when we did the garage gym build out. I also added one right above the rack to get the top printers. I am a huge fan of these Barina fixtures. They're cheap, they're easy to use, and they're super reliable. Not really any functional reason for this other than it looks cool. So really the last thing to do is to obviously load it up with 3D printers. And it just so happens that those four that I ordered are set to arrive today. So let's get those unboxed, load it up, see how it works. Now, even though there was a small hiccup with customs where the four printers I ordered were kind of held up there for about 10 days, it did allow me to set up the six printers that I had in the rack and run it as a print farm, cranking out parts. And I gotta say, I'm really digging it. And then the remaining printer showed up, filling out the rack, making it all symmetrical and just, I don't know, makes me feel good. Okay, so now I wanna try and get ahead of some questions that I'm sure some people are gonna be asking. And the first one is probably about ventilation. As you can probably see, I don't have any ventilation for this setup currently, and I really don't plan on adding one. The big reason for that is I print almost exclusively in PETG, which doesn't emit very many VOCs and really has no smell at all. Now, obviously, if I was printing in a nastier material like ABS, I would definitely want to ventilate this. Another question may be about the temperature or humidity down here in my basement. Now the cool thing about this basement and maybe all basements, I really don't know, is that it stays pretty much the same temperature year round. And that's usually in somewhere in the mid seventies. The humidity level down here is also extremely low. And that's partially because there is a jerry rigged way to get conditioned air into this space. So it's technically kind of air conditioned, although not totally. And low humidity levels is great for 3D printing filament, especially the materials that absorb moisture like nylons, ABS, that kind of stuff. Some of you may be wondering where the heck do I store all the filament? You can see behind me, I put up two shelves to store a bunch of filament. And though this may look like a lot, it's actually just under a month's worth of runtime. So I technically need more storage that I'm gonna kind of look around here for. So all in all, I'm super happy with how this thing turned out. And sure enough, the UPS systems were actually tested the other day when we had a power blip. Sure enough, it saved all the prints. There were no impacts on print quality or anything like that. And these things just kept on going. And because I've had the opportunity to run these printers for several days nonstop, I've got to see if vibration ever rears its ugly head. And I'm happy to say it hasn't. Now, is that because we put them on cement pavers with a foam dampener? I don't know. And as cool as the printers are to look at, I think the star of the show for me at least is this little workstation. It's worked out perfect. Twice a day, I go to the rack, I pull prints off, I bring them here, I clean them up, I put them away, and I sweep everything into the trash can exactly like I thought it up. Now there's still plenty of opportunity for organization and optimization and all that kind of stuff. I'll definitely get to that, but for right now, this works great. So what do you guys think? Overkill? Is there something you could at least take from this and apply to your shop? Or is there something that you think I should be doing differently? Leave those all down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button. I'm gonna go fire these up and get them back to work. I will see you guys on the next project. Until then, keep pursuing shop greatness. <laughs>